Um, hello, Rich. Uh, thank you for your participation in Collective Intelligent Project program, program YouTube. Uh, uh, there, uh, there are only a few que few questions. Okay. Um, uh, everyone, when they start a project, has a dream. What was your dream? With long Ah, um, my dream with Lumio was, um, I guess I had an experience, like a personal experience, uh, that was really, uh, transformative for me. So during the Occupy Wall Street movement, um, that reached all the way down to New Zealand where I'm from back in 2011. And, and, and I had my first, um, chance to sit in a general assembly and, um, practice this um, consensus decision-making process where, where we, we got to benefit from the intelligence of everyone in the group and mm -hmm. the perspectives and the experiences and the history of everyone in the group and together form a kind of collective intelligence. And that collective intelligence felt to me to be more um, creative, smarter, um, more compassionate, uh, more interesting, more dynamic, more evolved than, than any of the individuals. Um, mm -hmm. So discovering that through a lived experience rather than, you know, like reading an essay or an article um, really moved me and it, and it um, moved some of my friends too. And so um, we decided to start Lumio after that experience because we thought um, many, many more people should, should be able to, practice um, being a contributor to a collective intelligence and mm -hmm. um, that the general assembly meeting in the square um, was probably not the most accessible method for, for doing that. So, so we thought um, if we can make a, a technology platform, then more people will have this experience. And mm -hmm. um, uh, with this collective intelligence, we, perhaps we can address some of the very pressing challenges that, that face us. Okay. Then uh, are you thinking, what are you thinking about if your dream has been accomplished uh, or what part of your dream has, do you think, uh, are you feeling really accomplished now? Um, I feel like what we've accomplished is um, we're still here. We're still doing it. That's, um, that's quite an achievement uh, to, have, to have this like very optimistic vision and then to start making progress on it and to still, to still be alive five years later, to still be um, developing the software and, and to still have um, more and more people from around the world using it. Um, of course, when we started, I assumed that um, we were going to be more popular than Facebook in, in about two or three weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And it's obviously taken a bit longer than that. Um, I underestimated how um, slow it is to transform culture. Like I, I just thought if we just had the right piece of technology, then um, everyone would have access to this collective intelligence. So we just need to build, a t we need to build a tool and then, and then the problem solved. Um, and I underestimated how much um, work is involved in, in culture change. So in, in most of us spend most of our time, I think working in uh, non democratic ways. Like we work in hierarchies either um, in our, experiences at school or in a workplace or um, even a lot of activism is, is structured in, in fairly hierarchical ways. And so we've got all these habits, uh, behaviors, language, values that are associated with um, those experiences of being in a hierarchy. So to, to, to try and um, uh, organize in a different way, to organize in a collaborative, non-hierarchical, participatory uh, whatever, whatever the like, horizontal, you know, whatever language you want to use to describe it, to organize in that way requires actually like a, a transformation in culture. And that mm -hmm. I think um, technology helps with that, but really um, it requires a lot more um, depth and intimacy than, than you can achieve with just technology on its own. Okay. Uh, uh, how many people working in development of Lumio? Um, uh, do you have an active community? Yeah, so um, we have a, Lumia is um, built by a, a worker-owned cooperative. There's about 10 of us, I think, um, and, um, and it's open source as well. So uh, mm -hmm. we've got, at the moment, there's two full-time developers um, 
mm-hmm. uh, that are you know paid from Lumio to, to work on the software, and then um, anyone is is free to contribute as well uh, to the open source platform. And honestly, there's not um, there's we have um, small contributions, but we don't have like a big active uh, contributor community. I think because um, we uh, you know some some open source projects are really well designed to have lots of participants coming in and and working on lots of parts, whereas um, with Lumia we've really had a focus on like a very strict adherence to uh, making the user experience as accessible as possible. So that means we don't really want to have millions and millions of features in there and have lots of people with different ideas. We actually want to have it um, quite um, quite a coherent user experience, which means we need to have quite a coherent design. And we haven't mm-hmm. really uh, figured out yet how to maintain that coherence and have many people contributing. Okay. Uh, okay, I have a question about the Spanish people. Uh, how do you feel the Spanish community in Lumio? Do you, do you feel more activity in coders or, or maybe more, more activity in users? What do you feel in your side? Um, so it's been really interesting for us, you know, um, if you, if you uh, could drill a hole through the globe, um, New Zealand and Spain are exactly opposite sides of the world. And yet um, Spain is our biggest user community. There's, there's um, been times where more than half of the users are in, are in Spain. Um, at the moment, mm-hmm. I think it's about 40% or 35%. And um, most of that has come because of the, I think the very peculiar um, political situation in, in Spain where you've got, um, you know, 15M and Podemos and all these uh, uh, local attempts at direct democracy. Um, there's just far more activity in Spain um, and, and sustained over a much longer time than other parts of the world where these sorts of movements have, have started. So, um, there's an ex- yeah, extremely strong user community in Spain. And of course that's supported by the fact that the, um, the software is available in Spanish, which is um, a-, a helpful fact. Okay, um, for Finis, uh, what is uh, the future of Lumio? And what the new features uh, uh, can we expect? Yeah, so there's a, um, a, a bunch of new features coming very soon. There's quite a... Um, a major redevelopment happening, which is really exciting for us that we've been, um, Mm -hmm. we've been working on some um, architecture, sort of boring background stuff for a long time. And now we're very close to releasing a whole bunch of new um, uh, user facing features. And um, so the, there's kind of like three big categories. The first one is uh, new types of decisions. So at the moment there's just one Lumio decision. It's like a consensus proposal, Um, but shortly there'll be, I think we've already got five, maybe six. So there's different kinds of decision-making tools that you can use depending on what the situation is and what your group culture is and so on. Um, The second stage is to remove the Lumio decision from the Lumio platform so that you can, you can take a decision and you can, um, you can involve people wherever they are, whether they're in a a email list or a Facebook group or a telegram channel or, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. and so that people can participate in a decision without having to create an account and join a new platform and understand it all. They can just go straight to the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third uh, sort of more exper- experimental, but I'm very excited about it, one is to uh, develop a, what I'm calling like a robot facilitator, like a, a, a chat bot that can work in Slack or Telegram or any messenger client. And you can say to it, hey, hey Lumio bot, I need to make this decision with these people by this time. Can you go and um, get their input and facilitate a decision? Uh, So we've got a sort of first working prototype of that chatbot, which I think is um, once again going to make this decision making much more accessible. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for you uh, having uh, having with us. Um, We wish you at the luck in the project and we thank you very much for, for your time. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.